my name is David Flight, and for some of you, you've known me for a considerable period of time. For others, when I first started coming here, I'm wondering out whether you were born or not, but that'll show you that it goes back away. My wife, Cheryl, and I came here. I don't even, can't even work it out, and then we went. I had ministry for a while, and then we came here, and then we went to Cambodia, and, and now we're back. I love the song selection because it kind of feeds into where I'm wanting to share with this morning. And I'm going to suggest that we might stumble through Psalm 42. And I use the word stumble. A long, long time ago at Burley College on Norwood Parade, I remember going to Bible College and when I first went there, the people are preaching and leading worship, just trying to learn their craft. But I was a little bit, it was a little bit too down because I, I liked a bit of music. I liked worship to be loud and praise to be vigorous and it wasn't happening. So I said, oh, by the way, could I participate in this a little bit? And they were very happy for me to do so. So this went on for a while and then when it came to my turn to preach, this is what I got landed with. And parts of this psalm are quite down are quite interesting. They talk about the condition of the human heart. This speaks about despair, perhaps you could almost call depression, and frankly, most of us would like to avoid all that kind of talk. We'd much rather talk happy, clappy kind of ideas of being always up. I just wish that was the truth. And I know that after my attempt at preaching that day, people come up to me and said, are you okay? Are you okay? Actually, it was okay. I just expressed how I was feeling. And part of what I believe that the psalm does for us, it gives us the opportunities to say being honest with ourselves and being honest with God is not a bad thing. You know, when someone asks you, how are you? And you just want to say, I'm great, thank you. But the answer is, how are you is, well, actually, I'm not really. But you don't want to talk like that. But you know what? It may be the truth. And sometimes the language we use when we're a little bit down is a bit different too. In Job chapter 6, Job's in trouble. Most of us who know the story is, and his friends are saying all sorts of things to him. And they commented to him about the language that he was using. His reply was, my words are like the wind. In other words, some things that you say when you're down are pretty hard to comprehend. You know when someone's sharing their life is really in trouble and they're saying language and you have to sort out between the words they're using and the heart that they're trying to communicate to you. And that is where we find Psalm 42. The psalm is at times full of contradictions where you read one verse and it will talk about, we'll get to that, so just hold that, but we'll get to that. But one verse talks about, God, you're so faithful, and the next talk about, you've forgotten me. And that, to me, feels like the discussion that I actually have with myself and maybe we've had with each other at different times. In the Psalms, we read honest thoughts, honest laments, honest confessions and honest worship. Today, I want to prompt you to perhaps think about, when you read the Psalms next, how you read them. That it's always not about trying to find a nice, happy psalm that sometimes as we read through them, they give expression for how we feel and how we think. So I'm going to read right through the psalm and then we're going to stumble our way through it. As the deer pants, pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When can I go and meet with God? My tears have been my food day and night. While people say to me all day long, where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul. How I used to go to the house of God under the protection of the mighty one with shouts of joy and praise among the festive throng. Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my saviour and my God. My soul is downcast within me. Therefore, I will remember you from the land of Jordan, from the heights of Hermon. 
from Mount Mizar. Deep calls to deep. In the roar of your waterfalls, all your waves and breakers have swept over me. I say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why must I go about mourning, oppressed by the enemy? My bones suffer mortal agony as my foes taunt me, saying to me all day long, where is your God? Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Saviour and my God. And if we can just go right back up the top again, it would be great. When we first started the very first verse, what was going on in your head? Apart from going, as the deer pants for... (laughs) Because that sometimes is how we react and interact with the Psalms is it's through music. And quite rightly so, because most Psalms were poetry and they were sung. Which may be interesting, next time, Nathan, you read a Psalm, you have to sing it. (laughs) That will be interesting. But that's the nature of it. And so much of what we learn sometimes comes from the Psalms, but that musical connection. You used one of them this morning. Bless the Lord, all my soul, and all that is within me. And people are immediately going. And if I could just remember everything by music, my life would be simple. But it's not always that simple. But this verse here talks about a longing for God's presence. To be back in the temple, the people of God. What we didn't realise, and if we read this a little bit, is the person who wrote it, and some people would suggest it's David, but it's unlikely to be, It was kept away from going to the place of worship. It feels a little bit like today, doesn't it? Because people say, I really miss connecting with people at church. There is something different about standing next to people in the congregation praising God. And it's not just that physical dynamic, it's also a spiritual dynamic. Perhaps COVID has kept you away from doing the things that you want to do. I love the words, my soul thirsts for God, for the living God. This writer understands what it's like to long for the presence of God. Can we just have the next verse up, please? My tears have been my food day and night. When I read this verse, I come to the thinking that people might say, Um, your wife is sick or you're not well. You always have this and you always have that. Where is your God? Maybe our circumstances aren't good. Maybe our health is not good. Maybe there's generally bad stuff because who really knows our story? You don't know mine and frankly, I don't know yours either. So I don't know what is the story that's happening in your life. And this... These things I remember as I pour out my soul. I toyed whether I could do this or not, but I'm going to. What does it sound like to pour out your soul? Can someone give me an example? This is where you get to say something, by the way. (laughs) What does it sound like when you pour out your soul? That's interesting. What does it sound like when you pour out your soul? Yeah, it's crying, wailing, Wailing. anguish, yes, absolutely. This pouring out the soul is all about honesty. You could just imagine if you're pouring out your soul and it was out loud and someone came in from the other room, you'd be going, "Um, sorry about that, because you were just being pouring out what's actually happening inside of you. There are times in the middle of our circumstances where we actually say, what's going on? These things I remember as I pour out my soul, how I used to go to the house of God with shouts of joy among the festive throng. Sometimes we have to ask ourselves, what is our question? What's going on in our life and how we can be honest about that? So when someone says to you in the right time and place, how are you, David? Then I'm actually going to get a response that's honest. 
Now, of course, you know, there's a right place and a wrong place to ask those questions, but we actually have to be honest with ourselves and honest before God. And the Psalms, as we walk through them, give us a framework to say it's absolutely okay. So all those years ago when I preached about sadness at Bible college, when people said, are you okay? Uh, I, I thought I was just being normal, expressing those difficulties. We just have the next slide up, please. Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why are you so disturbed within me? I find there's something really interesting, almost a twist that happens when I read these verses. Because this is not just the little voice that you hear in your head. There's something else going on here. I talk aloud a lot when I'm working. I've recently been doing a bathroom at home and Cheryl keeps saying, um, you talking to me? Uh, no, just talking to myself. And I'm pretty loud about it. This is what we're talking about here. That the writer is saying, my soul, why are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? And the honesty of this helps give me permission that that's sometimes how I feel. And I absolutely guarantee you it's how most of us feel at some point or another. And sometimes there can be a shame that you feel like that. You feel like you, people say, oh, you've got to move on. Well, sometimes moving on is not that hard. But sometimes speaking out loud is really good because I think there's an interesting contrast with the voice and speaking out loud. Self-talk, because I talk so much when I'm working, I sometimes ask a question and answer it. So it may be very, very funny. I could give you an example of it and you'd just laugh, but it's not, I think it's funny. My wife doesn't always agree with my, uh, my humour about myself. Particularly, you know, I'm doing something and I can't work it out. Ah, yes, that's the answer, David. But I talk out loud because it helps me process and think. And the psalmist is helping us think that that's not a bad idea for ourselves when it comes to our prayer life. We've got these voices going on in our head at times, so talking to ourselves is different than listening to ourselves. Sometimes there can be a conversation of despondency. Numbers of us know exactly what sadness is going and we're still wrestling with those issues in our life. It can be from something from a long time ago that we're still living with. It could be something that's about to come. It's something that's recently happened. And what I love here is there's this framework in the Psalms that that's okay. It's okay to feel that way. Don't be pressured into thinking you've got to be happy all the time because that's just not the way it is. There's a conversation that we see here and it's about acknowledging despair and even sadness and that's kind of where I'm okay with this because it doesn't leave me at that point. This leaves me with... I'm downcast, I'm really disturbed on the inside, what do I need to do? Please read those words. What's the answer? What do I need to do? Put your hope in God. Put your hope in God. Which doesn't mean ignoring the first feelings of downcast and despondency, but it gives us direction to put your hope in God. I need to have hope in God. I need to have faith, not just acting positive. Come on, David, just be happy. Sometimes just trying to be happy can be a bit of a struggle. I will remember you from the land of the Jordan, reminding ourselves of the goodness of God, reminding ourselves how God has been faithful in our life, perhaps in these times of sadness, is a good thing to do. The Psalms are an instructional form of teaching because for some of you, when I said the goodness of God, what did you think of? Someone please help me out here. The song, yes, thank you very much. Yeah, because the Psalms are written in a poetic kind of way that enables us to understand perhaps and remember. Remember. 
There's a flip side to that, and this is kind of a bit of a side for me. Back in 1982, that's a long time ago for some, like predates you, um, I love music. I like listening to all kinds of music. And uh, my headspace wasn't that awesome. Um, and then I heard someone say to me when we were driving along in the car, you know what the words of that song are? You know you can sing things and hear things and you don't think what those words are? And I realised what it was. And so I was challenged to do a fast. Not by this person, but I felt prompted by God. So I stopped listening to all music for a bit over two weeks. Because I realised the words, the impact of things that we've already learnt and hearing today, like as the deer, all these kind of things come in often. So what I did for two weeks, I didn't listen to any music. And that was really hard. <laughs> it was really hard because everything was on autopilot. Because I suddenly realised what I'm allowing to actually come into my, my headspace. The accidental stuff that happens because you're just singing along. And one lunchtime in Bayswater, I can still remember where I was sitting, having my lunch, getting out of the car, and my have never been the same since. Because there's a realisation that I need to be careful about what I allow to go into my head. And that's kind of a bit of a side, but it's really connected with being honest about ourselves, but putting our hope in God. Can we just flick to the next verse, please? Deep calls to deep in the roar of your waterfalls. All your ways and breakers have swept over me. Part of me was scared to even address part of this verse because we know some things of life break over us. And anyone know what it's like? Do you know you're trying to swim out of the ocean and you go out and you end up coming in because everything's washing over you. You just haven't got what it takes until you read an important word up there. Your waterfalls and all your waves and breakers. In all of this, the writer is acknowledging sovereign God. That somehow in all of this kind of stuff, God is still sovereign. And I'm not saying the cause. What I'm saying is God is over all. So that is why we go to him. We go to him to say, I'm downcast. I'm despondent. I'm sad. I don't understand it. Life is washing over me. It's not a really nice thing to go out in the waves and end up on the beach feeling like you've just been crashed out badly. Life can be a little bit, a little bit like that at times. Just flick to the next verse, please. I say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? It's pretty serious words. Is anyone else not expecting you to not a show of hands? You can if you want to. God, why have you forgotten me? What I thought was going to happen has not happened. What I thought was true is not true. Does he really mean, God, have you forgotten me? Or is he putting words to his frustration? Perhaps it's part of pouring out of the soul to express those feelings. I feel forgotten. I want out. I don't like it like this. I'm presuming that I'm not the only person who's ever prayed like this, by the way. Some things are hard for us to work through. Some things we never know about in other people's lives. Some hard times are observable. You could look at some and go, yeah, I kind of understand. I can see what you're going through. But for others, we just never see. We just never see. And what I love about the way that the psalmist speaks, 
he starts to give expression to going through that dialogue with his God. Some hard times and despair are observable and sometimes others, you just don't see it. I knew many years ago a young girl that was in the congregation where I was pastoring and I knew she was going, had been going through something but it was almost like no one talks about it. So crazily one Sunday morning I shared something to her to say we acknowledge your grief which starts to set people free because we just can't live in not expressing how we feel and not being honest. But some things you can see and some things you don't. So when I see someone that's sad now, someone that's a bit despondent, that's a bit down, I go, ooh, what's going on there? Not over-anxious to know the details, but just know I haven't walked in their shoes. You don't know what it's like to be me. It's really good. I don't know what it's like to be you either. Thank you very much, Mandy, for helping me out there. Next verse, please. This is talking to yourself. Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why disturbed within me? David asked, Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Saviour and my God. And one more slide. So what is our response to the adversity that we have in our life? Some adversity is internal. No one gets to know it. Some adversity is obvious to others. They could say, oh, this has happened to so-and-so. Or how do we respond to adversity? putting our hope in God. Perhaps there has to be a reordering of our priorities when it says hope in God first and other things. I don't know what your hopes and dreams are, but I know that the first one on the list needs to be putting your hope in God. And secondly is to identify unhelpful thoughts. I think it's really fantastic being part of a small group. Whether it's the home group you go to or it's other people that you connect to. As a man, the favourite thing that men do is, you go, yeah, I'm okay. And men, we don't do that very well at all. But we have to learn to share with each other. And sometimes when we have thoughts going on in our head that are really not healthy... It's not until we start to sharing that with others in the context of our faith we find the journey through. And speak to yourself of God's faithfulness. Speak to yourself about God's faithfulness to your life in the past, his promises that are in scripture and if it helps you to sing those promises you go and sing them. My father sings to himself a lot and uh, that made my wife very concerned when we were first going out because my father would kind of make words and lyrics up as he was going along and she would say, is that where this is all going? I'm going, perhaps, perhaps it is. Yeah, that's right. There's an error in the next line, what is it? Praise him in the down moments. Just because it's on the screen doesn't make it right. Come on, help me out. Praise him in the down moments. Yeah, all moments, but particularly in the down moments. 
O oh, my soul, why am I cast down? But yet I will praise God. If you haven't learned to start speaking to yourself, maybe it's time to start. If everyone thinks you're crazy, I'm good with that. I'm crazy myself. Putting our hope in God, identifying unhelpful thoughts, speaking to yourself of God's faithfulness and praising him in all moments, perhaps loudest praise. There's a song we've sung, when we're, and we're not going to sing it today, but we're going to... There's a song we've sung about raise a hallelujah. And I've often thought it would be really, really good to hear when the person wrote it what they were all on about. Because there was a whole lot of unbelief in their life and they had sickness in their church community. And in the middle of that, there was all this doubt about what was going to happen. And that's where the song came from, I raise a hallelujah, in the middle of the mystery. And then you have words like sing a little louder and like, so is it about singing loud? No, it's not about singing loud. It's who we're singing to. And that's where the Psalms are full of praise, singing praise, putting praise on our lips. In Psalm 103, there's words that say, and forget none of his benefits. The Psalms are completely full of awesome things, awesome words and lyrics. And what I really want you to take from today is that when you read a Psalm, is to immerse yourself in that Psalm. And it's not always neat. It's not always tired. Some Psalms, particularly from David, are downright, whoa, I don't know if I would have put that in print. But he did. It gives expression to it. And when I come to God and say, God, why am I cast down? Why am I sad? I'm giving the place for moving forward. Because I'm being honest. Because why would you say to God, yeah, I'm okay, I'm totally fine. Because God knows. Praise him all the time, particularly in the down times. In Colossians 3 and verse 16 is a great scripture. It's not coming up, so that's okay. You don't need to worry about that. It says, let the message about Christ completely fill your life. Well, use all your wisdom to teach and instruct one another. So I'll read that again. While you use all your wisdom to teach and instruct one another, what's it going on about? With thankful hearts, sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God. The instructional nature of the psalms, particularly the ones that are just picking up words from Scripture, is a way to teach ourselves. You ever had a song that you can't get out of your head? It's good if it's a good song. So years ago, I was finding myself singing things. Mm, don't know if that's really, really uplifting lyrics. And since I stopped that, nothing has been the same since. So I'm going to lead us in a time of reflection musically, and you are welcome to join in, but more so stay seated and reflect on the words of this song, which is called Psalm 42. As the deer pants for the water, so my soul pants for you. All my tears have been my father. Day and night, my only food. Oh, my soul. Put your hope in Christ. 
Christ to hold As the deer Longs for the water So my soul Longs to be home I'm now found Living water All the songs loud as praise As the deep cries out for answers As your waves crash over me Let your blue is like a fence God at last I'm now found of living water my heart bless your name Strings of trouble never ceasing calls for songs loud as praise Close to deep waves of unbelief, breakers crashing down, bring me to my knees. It goes on and on. Where is my God? My salvation is in you and you alone. Deep calls to deep waves of unbelief. Hold me to my knees It goes on and on Where is my God? My salvation is in you and you alone I'm the fount of living water To my heart to sing your praise of trouble never ceasing call for songs of loudest praise and now found of living water tune my heart to sing your praise streams of trouble never ceasing Calls for songs of loudest praise. Calls for songs of loudest praise. Oh, Lord God, thank you. Thank you that we can be real with you, honest with you that we can pour out our soul before you and that you hear us, that you even understand our ways because of Jesus. And so tune our hearts, Lord, to bless your name. Tune our hearts to bless your name, to give you praise. And so, Lord, together we say and we put our hope in you. We put our trust in you. And we will yet praise you because you are our saviour and our God forever and ever and you continue to reign. And we give you all the glory and praise. Amen.